Hello YouTube, welcome to episode 6 of Bright Lights, it's Damien, it's Sunderland, and we have got a crunch game today, it's a big title 6 pointer. We have got Oxford, who are currently sitting on 2nd on goal difference with us, that is correct, Oxford have come out of this uh, little uh, run of games where they barely have lost, you know, they've come through, they've lost the one there, check and take trophy game, they lost the Fleetwood, but apart from that they've rarely lost and they've climbed up the ladder um, quite well have Oxford. And now they find themselves with equal points of us. Barnsley has fallen off a little bit, only four points behind us though. So I uh, wouldn't say that they've fallen off greatly, but they've, you know, they were level with points that were ahead of us by a couple of points at one stage. But now to be four points clear of them is not too bad. I ourselves, for the last game we would have seen, that would have been that 2 0 loss to Wolves. Um, we beat Gilligan 3 1 in a game that we were very convincing in. It could have been a lot more. And then we drew 0 0 to Wilburton in a game I don't know how we did not score in. We had 12 shots, 6 on target, dominated the ball. And, yeah, but we've got them put off a good save towards the end of the game. That kept us in it at nil-nil as well. But, yeah, we just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net, tried everything. Rotated the side as well for this uh, for this game against Oxford. But not being able to win is, uh, you know, a bit frustrating, especially with uh, Oxford being right on our tails. But there we are. We've got a season preview. It still reckons that Charlton and Barnsley are, are going to try and challenge us for the title. And Oxford have now moved up to sixth. Um, but... As things stand right now, I feel like we're okay. Um, Barnsley's a big game coming up as well in the league, and that will be the episode after this. It will be this Barnsley game, which is in here. Um, and to be fair, Fleetwood's not too far after that, where it could just be a... Uh, could It could be a Barnsley-Fleetwood doubleheader, but we'll wait and see how we are in the league when we get towards that Barnsley game. Um, if we can go on a run here and beat Oxford today, for instance, and beat Ackerton, Bristol, Plymouth, Wickham before we get into Barnsley... Um, you know, we could just, you know, Oxford maybe drop the game, Barnsley may have dropped the game, and then all of a sudden we'll beat this Barnsley game. We're clear enough that we only need to play the one on that day, and then we'll pick a game to do a title running as well for an episode two. Um, in terms of streaming, the stream today was great. You guys would have seen the back end of the stream and Lee Cardamall. Um, you guys must be wondering, what did you do with Lee Damien? I got rid of him straight away. You know, if anyone's going to undermine me like that, get very upset when you're, uh, you're coming off in a game where I need to make a tactical change, out the door. I don't care who you are, I don't care how long you've been at the club. If you want to come in to into my team, captain my team, and try and cause mutiny, you're out the door, I don't care who you are. So to get 1.4 mils to, for Rangers for Lee Cardinal, who, look, I'm going to be honest, for the level we're at, is great, but for any higher, he's probably not. You know, he's a good Skybet Champions, um, Championship player, yes. And yes, we'll probably get promoted this season, you would imagine so with the squad that we have. But in saying that, he isn't the biggest loss being 30. He's always going to continue, and he's currently injured, and he's out for 6 to 12 days. I wish it was a little bit longer, because to be honest, I just don't understand why he, why he arced up about it, and why he got so upset, and then why he said that he doesn't want to work with me anymore. Because, you know, over something so obnoxious coming off, yeah, you can be upset with the manager, but you've got to respect that at the end of the day, we're chasing a game against Wolves. You know, he's a defensive midfielder. He's not like he's one of the, uh, one of the other two in front of him that are a little bit more attacking-minded. You know, it makes sense to take him off as a coach. Anyhow, we're going to go in and then made one transfer in, and considering the defensive midfielder went out, Joe Pelupesi um, has come in at centre defensive mid. Now, he can actually play quite naturally as a box-to-box -box midfielder, which I did like, because if we can get in maybe a younger centre defensive mid that is really good um, with a lot of potential, I'm very tempted to play this guy in the middle of the park over max power. Um, I just think this guy's great, and he's, you know, at 25, you know, he's at his peak, he's a decent player for most championship sides, he ain't too bad as well, as you can see, he's on par with Max Power, and Dylan's better than both of them, but if you look at centre defensive, where we will mainly play him, he's the best centre defensive mid that we have in the club, and I reckon him as a halfback is unreal, just someone that's great in the air, um, you know, for someone that's 179 centimetres, he's great in the air, with his good headering, marking, tackling, you know, he's just very good mentally, he's very well-rounded, I do like the look of um, Joey here, and I I think Joey's a very good replacement for Lee Cardamol. You know, he's got decent determination. He's also got decent leadership as well. So we'll help that leadership void too. I thought it was just a smart sign. He was transfer listed on deadline day for 2.2 mil. And to pick him up for 2.2 mil, I thought was pretty good. Unfortunately, when we picked him up, he was out for a little bit with... Um, uh, I think it was a pulled hamstring, but we still went, for, went ahead with the transfer because obviously it's not too big of an injury. Um, he has made the bench today. He didn't play in the last game, obviously, and didn't play in the Gilligan home as, again, as the... Uh, Transfer wasn't done by them because the Gillingham game was on the 30th or the 31st during transfer deadline day. Um, but yeah, Joey will be on the bench and he'll feature in games to come and hopefully stays injury-free. And next time we come up here in the next episode with Barnsley, 
hopefully you'll get to see him in this role. However, it is pretty straightforward for us. Maguire's been in some great form of late. He has been sensational. Um, you know, um, it, it keeps telling me he's average rating. Some of the spots he gets in, some of the goals he hits is unreal. Um, you know, Dylan obviously max power. Taram's learning to play a little bit deeper at the moment. He's obviously very good and he's growing a lot and, you know, he's quite at the level. Um, if we're going to look at people growing a lot, I know I'm pretty sure that um, Bali and Mumba um, is growing a lot too. You know, as you can see, he's just going up. His decision making is going up. I really like the look of that um, from him. And there's a lot of people growing. Um, Honeyman might start getting a little bit concerned again because we haven't really played... Um, haven't really played the four two three one of late either. Uh, we might go. We I was tempted to go play it against um, AFC when we didn't play it. Um, may go play it against Bristol Rovers as we was you know we were successful in the terms of the way we play. We just drew one one with them when they were bottom. But we might play it um, the four two three one. That was obviously on stream earlier. But that's the team we're going in with. Love's going to play over Tom Flanagan. Is he? Nah, I'm going to change that. Um, Flanagan and Love are very similar. Um, Flanagan is probably a bit more of a first team choice, but Love's in really good form. Bear Hill, Leuvens, I'm actually going to play Jack Baldwin in this game over um, Leuvens. Um, Oviedo, um, Turan, Dylan, Power, Maguire, Watmore, and Amaja. Let's get into it though, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It is going to be Sunderland and Oxford. Away at Oxford, you know, Sam Smith, Brownie there. Connor Brannigan obviously is a very good player. Um, I wouldn't mind Cameron at the level that we're at. You know, he's obviously got a lot of potential. Um, Someone that I haven't got in the shortlist, thank God. But I was about to say, I need to make sure I have it. And, you know, someone from yesteryear, Andy Cole. He doesn't have much pace, and I expect Duncan Mortimer to get at him a lot. So we'll see how we go there, but it's obviously a leader for them. Um, I'm going to tell the lads to come on and show me what you can do. No one seems too up for it. There we are. The, the lads weren't happy that when we saw, sold Lee Cardinal, then I quite simply told him it was Ada McGinney that kind of led that revolt. And then I said, look, we've got a lot of youth prospects in Bali and... Uh, and Taram, um, you know, we reduced the youth talent, you know, we didn't need him because I think there's a lot of good young players around. They agreed with me on that one. Ada McGinney has a promise now, 365 days to get youth. Um, for Ada McGinney, he doesn't know this yet, but I'm planning to sell him in the summer anyway because I barely use him at the moment. Um, with the way the team is, he does make the bench. He does come off occasionally, but there we go. At the moment, though, Oxford are dominating this game. So let's just tell the boys just to show a little bit more passion or demand more. I've gone with demand more, but just want to get out there, get a little bit of work rate and start eking this possession back, which we're slowly doing, not too much. It's a very even game. Would I take a draw? It opens the door for Barnsley. So, and we just went one new up there for um, Woodrow. Um, but at the same time, a draw away against a title rival isn't the worst, but this is a big six point game. Madja, his bull there, finds Oviedo, finds Turam. Turam's switch is not bad towards Tom Flanagan, who picks up another booking. Every time I seem to play the guy on a live stream or a live game, he picks up a booking. Dylan, though, his bull, his back heel doesn't find a way through Cameron Brannigan, and it will find Whitey. Whitey now driving forward into the space. We do press well, but that's a good ball in towards Smith. Smith's one on one, he shouldn't miss, and he doesn't. And Sam Smith scores for his 23rd goal for the season. Um, we don't have a striker that is doing this for us, unfortunately. We just don't have a striker between Madra or um, Charlie or Waikiki, who's meant to be the best uh, striker in the league, that is consistently scoring goals. Um, our wingers are creating a lot for him, and we are creating you know goal scoring opportunities, but we're just not. Um, we do score a fair amount of goals for ourselves, and you can see we scored fifty seven. But I like to say it's a bit of a mixture from everybody, and it's proving a little bit of a pain. I'm going to get aggressive with the lads and tell them I want to I want to see you much better. Um, I'm going to give it to the 60th, and then we're going to move the 4 2 3 one a little bit more aggressive and get Honeyman in behind and get Taram off, I reckon. Let's see how we go. Everyone looking nervous, which I don't like. Um, as Whitey gets on the ball, it's another long ball towards Holmes. He hits on the volley. Well, that's actually a great save by McLaughlin. What a save, son. Watch that one back, because it's kind of come out of nothing. It's just a long ball, and then next minute it's just found its way through. As we go to behind the goal, the ball is very quick to be played. As you can see, the ball gets to Holmes, and Holmes doesn't even have much time. He just brings it down and smacks this, doesn't he? Just look at that. Leathers that outside the foot. McLaughlin's man put out a good left hand here. I was talking to a Sunderland fan in the chat today, and he was saying that McLaughlin's been in some great form in real life. And he's been playing well for us as well. So there we go. We still need another keeper, though, I reckon, for next year. Um, as Mushino, you're going to get on the ball, but hopefully Turan doesn't foul here because he's already on a yellow. Instead, he wins it. I doubt that this is actually going to be a highlight for us, but Watmore's driving forward and still with Watmore. There's not really much in the box for him. In the end, he's decided to shoot or cross, and it's going to be deflected and out for a corner. Can we work something from the corner? Oviedo has been decent from corners. We'll see how he wants to go. He puts it in towards the back post. Majo, he's hit the bar. 
Unlucky, Josh. Unlucky. I'm going to tell the lad just to get creative. Try get themselves a goal. Try get on the score sheet and see what happens. Turam still looking nervous. Please not a corner goal. Ball in back post. That's a goal. Oh, he's put it over the bar, Mushino. And there we are. I'm going to tell the lads, that's it. I've seen enough. Let's get Turam out and we're going to get Honeyman in. Um, but we're going to leave everything else the same. Everything else the same as, as we are here. Um, I'm going to go slightly more direct at a much higher tempo, extremely high tempo. Really going to try and unsettle them um, in the way they, they play. And there we go. All right, Honeyman's on. If we're not going to keep the ball well enough, we might as well go a little bit more direct with it. But we'll see how we go. At the moment, though, not much happening here. I'm going to go to the tactic screen. We are going to take off Dylan, I reckon. And Dylan is going to come in out there. Is Dylan having a good game? What's Dylan doing? 6.8. And Max Power's having a 6.4. We're going to change that. Dylan's going to come into here. And we're going to move Max Power into there. Deep line playmaker on support. And we are going to bring on Charlie up front as a target man. Try and hit him. I'm going to go to very attacking as well. Um, going to try and distribute to the flanks and distribute quickly with some longer kicks. Counter and counter press and really try and, um, oh, everything's really high. Really try and make sure we press in and try and win the ball back because we really need a goal right now. Going to tell us to push forward as the ball goes into the box. Charlie with the flick on header straight at Mitchell though. And if that was the highlight, it wasn't really a key one if the game thought it was. A Mitchell, there we go, goes long. The highlight's still going here. Smith gets up, but we do win the header, but it's only as far as Cameron Brannigan is running the show. What a cool by Cole. What a ball by Cole. Holmes is in. Maguire stays big, and we do win ourselves a goal kick out of all that. What a ball from Ashley Cole, though, proving that he's still got a little bit of the technical ability there. Come on, boys. We need to go and just get ourselves ourselves a chance. It's a highlight, and it's McLaughlin. He goes long. He has to go long towards Duncan Watmore, and it's over the top, and it's found Watmore. There's numbers in the box. Watmore, good ball in. It's a good ball in. Maja! Oh, look, I don't know how he's managed to do it. Apparently, it's come off Ashley Cole, and it's gone in, because Maja should have buried that one from four yards out, but he's missed the ball. It's hit Cole, and it's gone in, and it's 1-1, and that puts us back in the first place. Squeaky bum time has a shoe, and we found our way a goal in squeaky bum time. Thank God for that. What more's ball in? It deflected off Cole. Madge's missed it, hit Mitchell, and gone in. Madge should have just buried it anyway. 90 minutes. It's five minutes out of time. There's three minutes out of time. Is there going to be a late minute highlight? It doesn't look like it, unless it's going to be from this throw in. Honeyman, it's a poor ball. Flanagan keeps it in play. Is the referee going to blow his whistle? Is he going to allow this one to come into the box? Instead, he gets absolutely crunched and it's full time. And we are so lucky to get a point out of this. Because we weren't at the races at all. Um, even though that game seems even, we didn't do nothing. I'm going to tell him that that was a very poor performance. And that was simple as that. Oviedo wasn't happy with that. And he just arced up before with uh, our talks. But, you know, it wasn't the best from us. In terms of the table, where does that leave us? Barnsley didn't win. I'm guessing Barnsley drew or lost. I think they drew because they were four points clear. Gilligan held into a 3-3 free -free draw. Gilligan scoring late. Two goals late in 86-88 to get a 3-3 free -free draw. That's huge for us in terms of the league. So that's going to end episode 6. A squeaky bum time equaliser. We weren't at the races at all. But I guess teams that are good... I guess teams that are champions elect find a way to get points they don't deserve. And that was definitely one of the games. Enjoy the rest of your day or, day or night, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. As always, link in the description below to our Twitch, our Twitter. Um, go check them out. Go follow both so you know when we go live. I'll post a lot of updates about what's happening in the league and you know when we're going live and uh, when YouTube episodes are live on Twitter as well. So go check them out. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It is Bright Lights, Episode 6, and Damien and Sunderland signing off YouTube. Thank you and goodbye.